the reason I decided to become an OPD police officer is, is to help my community and give back to the community um, where I come from. Came from a very um, tough background, so I just wanted to um, give back to that community that, that pretty much put me on the path that I'm on now. I wanted to be that small mustard seed of changing the public eye on, of the force, basically. I mean, it has to start somewhere, small then big. So if I could be that small, positive attribute to the force, that's what I would strive to be. I've always wanted to do this. Uh, I went to school for it, just something that always interests me. I took what I was good at, or what I thought I was good at, and applied it to the police department. Being a police officer is something I've always wanted to do, even when I was a little girl. I remember seeing NOPD cars in my neighborhood saying that that's something that I want to do. My family has owned some local grocery stores in the city here. Uh, we've been doing that most of our lives. My family owning businesses here. We got to see some of the struggles uh, that we were going through within the community. And um, we've had instances where we've had to call on the police and rely on the police to come help us. And uh, we've had a lot of positive and, uh, experiences with the police and we also had some negative instances with the police. So I saw it as an opportunity that I can help people and bring a positive image to the police department and do something positive in my life and take into consideration the things that I've grown up with and how I can change those things. Tasers, I was laid out, I was the guy under the house um, so they, they put one on my shoulder and one on my foot, so my whole body got it. Um, so, you know, it, it, I survived though. And again, after it was over, I was one step closer to graduation. The same way that the guys are expected to hold, you have to hold too. Nothing, they're not gonna bend any rules. I mean, don't get scared by seeing some of the things that you'll see, but just as the men can do it, the women can do it too. Uh, the pepper spray, it was pretty intense. It, it, the pepper spray definitely was the worst day of the academy for me. It was miserable. Everybody gets introduced in the class, and they got to tell their background. And when I got to tell my background, I started to break up because it's that important to me. It's been that important to me. I've been waiting 24 years to do this. During Hell Day, um, when we started doing all the physical stuff, and we we're all wore out, we we're extremely tired, and you think that there's no end to it. And uh, the commander came out there and we all lined up and he addressed us. And he said, uh, I want you to run to the fence and back forever. And when he said that, I thought, wow, I'm gonna run to the fence and come back. I'm gonna be a police officer forever. This class is, I think, one of the best we've had. It's there, more mature. They have a, a higher level of education, which is, makes it a little bit easier for them to understand some of the things that we're teaching. With the group that we're gonna graduate, in my heart I'm hoping that we're asking them to do more than any other group that I've had to train because of where we are right now as a department. But if we can get about a bunch more class like these young kids, and I call them kids in the academy because I'm old enough to be all them's dads, uh, I think the police department will be all right because they, they're very impressive. After spending six months with these guys, uh, I realized that we're here to do the better thing. We're here, we want to do the best for our communities, not just for ourselves and our families, but for the community. Uh, we care about where we live, we care about what we do, and we want to make a positive change in this, in this city. Dealing with this class that they can expect good, fair, and impartial police officers. I never knew one kid, when I, one kid, one recruit, whatever you want to call them, when I came here. You know, I think I got 27 friends now. I think they care about the citizens. I think the majority of them do. I mean, they want the city to be safe, and they, they're trying to do an extremely difficult job. I, mean, I think all of them try to do a good job. I want my kids to, to look at me and say, that's, that's what the New Orleans Police Department looks like. You know, I, want, I want to be that, that, that example for them. Just that I'm there to help 
and that you know I'm, I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability and try to help them the best way I can. We as police, we're, we're kind of separated from society. There's Joe Blow, there's Joe Civilian, there's the police. But remind people and remind yourself that you're a citizen too. You know, um, you know, we always tell each other, you know, treat people the way you want your mom to be treated, you want your sister to be treated, your husband, your wife. And that's true. It's not just words. You know, we gotta remember, you know, you put on a gun and a badge, and we gotta remind ourselves. It separates us in some aspects from society, but the most important ones, the, the humanitarian part, we're all the same. Always take what you learn in your training and apply it to your everyday life and your career as a police officer. No question is ever a stupid question. Whatever you need to know, they know they can come to us, they can call us, they can come and see us to answer any questions they may have or address any concerns that may arise during their career, either now or when, once they get out on the street. Two simple thoughts. Be professional, be safe, and be smart. I'll have to add that to it. Be smart.